more basic sequencing. This is where we left it at the tail end of the previous lab and we're actually continuing with the same sequence of events but we're going to move into seal in logic and away from latch unlatch. And as I said before, if you use latches, as we say in the business, you have to unlatch the whole world. If you just go through writing code, latching everything, because you don't want to use more difficult to write logic, then when you get all done, you got to go back and find all those things that you latched and figure out when and how to unlatch them, which makes for some very difficult to read code. So what we're going to do is go through each wrong and convert it to sealing logic from latching logic. The first thing we're going to do is convert our OK to start rung, rung two, to logic that stays OK to start once the sequence has begun. To do that, we branch around all of the conditions that can change in the course of executing the sequence, which would be the steps not complete and the state of the sensors. We branch around with a seal in true if on, OK, start. Then we added an instruction because if we were to seal in, OK, start without the sequence complete, true if off, then this wrong would never clear. It would just go on and that'd be it. So the sequence complete. So if you consider what we're doing, we're telling the operator, so to speak, or the system, that if these conditions are met, those six conditions of step 0, 1, and 2 not complete, you know, the true off, and sensor 1, 2, and 3 not on, that's our starting point, OK to start. But we're going to maintain that OK to start through the rest of the sequence. And there's reasons for, reasons for doing that. This was not a latching uh, rung, but this was one of the first changes that we made in the manual. Next, we're going to change our cycle running, or cycle start, is what we're going to call it. We're going to change this from latch unlatch to seal in logic. Okay, see what we did. Before we had OK start and the start push button to latch this bit. Now we're going to use this bit as a seal in, but we're going to add these two conditions down here. So if either one of these was true, then you uh, reset output 1 to 0. These accomplish the exact same thing. Only one thing left to change, and that is change this to a different instruction type, and delete this wrong. Because these two conditions now, and something you may have noticed if you are into logic and Boolean algebra, is that if you have this equal to 1 or this equal to 1, that is somewhat equivalent to this not equal to 1 and this not equal to 1. So these are ORed, these are ANDed. Just a little side note for the old timers that, that work with Boolean algebra. We've modified two rungs now, our cycle start and our OK start. We can also eliminate this wrong, which means we can also eliminate this condition because there's no longer a step zero complete. Now let's move down to the next rung, which would be rung two, and we want to seal in the conditions to say that step one is complete. Now, if you're thinking ahead, there's two routes to go, and we're going to explore both. One is that once we complete a step, we leave that bit set. The other is that we don't leave it set, and we kind of open the way for more to come behind it. That'll make more sense later. So you can see in rung two here, for step one complete, we change that to an OTE, so it has a false and a true execution. And we added the sequence complete the same as we did for OK to start, because that's when the sequence is complete, we want to release all of these sealed in rungs. We took step complete, step one complete, and we use it as our seal in, 
And notice that the cycle start has now replaced step zero complete, which we had in there before. So once we get the sequence started, we don't have to keep repeating all of the conditions. It's because when you think about these conditions right here, they're sealed in with this, but they were they followed this. So OK to start is embedded in cycle start. See, OK to start here is part of cycle start. So once you start, you were not able to start unless it was OK to start. So cycle start logically includes what gave us cycle start, which would be it was OK to start and we hit the start push button. And we know that the OK to start is not going to go away because we seal that in and the only thing that can undo it is the sequence complete. Now this logic could be simplified some more. In the old days we did that with Boolean algebra. We actually wrote out the logic in Boolean algebra and then did trans, transposing, we transposed conditions to simplify it to the least amount of instructions and actions that would accomplish the same thing logically. And we did that because memory was very expensive and you had to be really, really stingy with how you used your memory. Well, those days are long gone. There's plenty of memory now. I've never ran out of memory in a controller. Now let's look at step two complete and edit that rung, get rid of the latch and use the ceiling logic. Now notice when we edited rung three for the step two complete, seal in logic that we added step one complete from the previous rung. We didn't need to do that here because there was no place else for the logic to go. You could also argue that the cycle start could be outside of the seal in group because what's going to stop this or clear it is the sequence complete. And the sequence complete is going to drop out the OK start. However, that does not drop out the cycle start. So it's just, just a matter of how you want to write it. I would stick to what we're doing in the manual because it's a, it's, it's a common thread. It's the way we're doing it. And if you try to deviate, you might dig a hole for yourself. But by all means, if you're doing this on your own, you have the time once you've done it the way we showed, go back and play with it and see how you might modify it to your way of thinking, but always test it when you're done to make sure it still works correctly. So now let's move on to rung four. Okay, I've done step three complete rung. Uh, by the way, when I'm doing this, I'm not actually sitting down and doing this lab project. I'm trying to work with what's in the manual, work with the logic, and record it at the same time. So I definitely make mistakes. I just saw that in rung three, I had step one complete twice. When you see stuff like that in the recording and you see that it's incorrect, it will get fixed. One thing I do not do is go back and re-record. One thing I've learned the hard way is if you go back and re-record, to eliminate a mistake, you're bound to leave two more mistakes in there because your mind is on recording, not as much on the logic. So if you see mistakes along the way, don't worry about it. When we go to test it, it won't work. Then you can see me troubleshoot my mistakes. Next thing we want to do is we don't have sequence complete, B304. If I do a cross-reference on that, well, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. Cross-reference has been disabled. I'm going to go enable it. Enable cross-reference online. I did not turn that off. At least I didn't think I did. I've never even seen that before. You learn something new all the time. So I right-clicked right on sequence complete and I did a cross-reference to show you that there's an XIO in true, true if off in rungs 0, 2, 3, and 4, but there's no OTE. There's nothing turning it on. So let's do something to turn on sequence complete. 
Now we no longer have to clear B30 because we're not latching these bits anymore. We don't have to unlatch cycle start because we're not latching it. So I can start right out by deleting, change this to a different instruction type, and drag this address down. And now take a look at this. I need step three complete, which is in there. I don't need the reset push button. I need step three complete and I need the sensors to all be back in their home position. And I do believe that's it. I could show you or uh, narrate my thinking, you know, think out loud through the whole process, but that would take too long. The recording would just be way too long. As it is now, I need to drop a little of it to shorten it up. The next thing that we discuss is with the latch unlatch, it had a true to false, it had a true execution and no false execution. The wrong being false did not execute anything, only a wrong true condition. Therefore, when you cycled power or cycled mode, anything that was latched when you left is still latched when you came back. So it maintained the state. Now, in most sequences, you don't want to do that. You want everything to clear when you come back. But we're going to show you how to do that if it's something that you want to do or to understand why somebody or how they did it. First thing we showed you was that you could replace true if off B301, true if off B302. If you want to consider that the entire 16 bit integer B3 colon zero is used for steps complete. Now, if you do this, you have to be committed to not using any bits in B3 word zero for anything but steps. We can replace these two instructions that, with this one that says that B3 zero is equal to zero, meaning there are no bits on. And then we can do the same thing with our sensors if we have the proper bit pattern entered in to the source B. And then the last thing that we did is we added logic to capture the current bit pattern in the step word, B30. Our goal with this last rung is real simple. And this is one of the reasons that we keep cycle start enabled for the entire sequence. Remember up above here, we sealed in cycle start once the start push button had been pressed. So cycle start is maintained for the whole length of time that the sequence is taking place. And this is very typical if you want to capture a value, you simply move that value into another register. The fact that it's B33 is irrelevant. It could be B3 uh, seven. It could be N7 colon five, it's just as long as it's a 16-bit word. So as long as cycle start is on B30, which is our sequence complete, step one, two, three, sequence complete, our, our steps that are complete, that word is continually, every single scan moved into B33. So if cycle start drops, in other words, if you stop the cycle, whether it's a loss of power or whatever the reason, the last scan that completed will have recorded whatever steps were complete into B33. That's all it's there for. So to demonstrate this, and this is going to be our first test here, it says it's okay to start, so I'm going to push the start push button. And we now have cycle start. And we are waiting for sensor one. So I'll turn on sensor one. Now we're waiting for sensor one to change state and sensor two. Okay, so now we got step one, step two complete, but not step three. If you look down here, you see that we are moving those two steps complete into B33. Now what I'm going to do is power off the controller and lose communications. 
Now it still says remote run, but believe me, it will time out here shortly and say that it's lost communications. There you go. So I'm going to turn the power back on. Of course, you got to give it a minute to uh, go through all the self test and wait until the run light comes on. Then I'm going to say retry. And I may have waited too long. There is a timeout. We'll see what happens. Okay, here we are back in the run mode after cycling power. In other words, I turned the power off to the controller. And of course, all the signaling logic has dropped out, correct? You see that because these have a true and a false execution, they're going to drop out if you cycle power or if you even just cycle mode, run mode, program mode, back to run mode. But look what I have. I still have the state of the steps the last time that this program executed a scan. So I have captured what state the steps were in. Then we added one more rung to move B33 back into B30. This rung, B31 slash zero. Everything in your HMI, everything on the screens of your HMI, your operator interface terminal, as I explained before, are all lookies touchies. If you put a button on the screen of your HMI that says restore sequence and you associate it, connect it to bit B31 slash zero in your controller, then when you toggle this bit on, you move B33 back into B30. And then of course, when you release the button, the, the job is done. So now if you look back up here, you can see that these steps are still there. They're still complete. The, in the sensors are left in the state that they were because when you stop the machine, you didn't necessarily move anything in the machine. Now this is pretty loose logic because Ordinarily, you wouldn't let an operator restart a process right from where it's at after a power failure. So we look up here and we see that we're not okay to start. That would be the first challenge. So we would have to get the sensors all back to this state unless we wanted to use this bit, restore sequence, to also restore this cycle start. In other words, add that in as a condition. In other words, we could drop this down and add in true if on this bit and that would turn on cycle start and seal it in and then we could continue on with our sequence from here. All that I wanted to do was to demonstrate to you some uses for the move instruction and how you could capture the state that a sequence was in if you lost power or change mode. I think we're going to leave it at that. We're not going to uh, spend a lot of time trying to make this little ancillary thing a, a major deal because it's not. Just a little demonstration.